Hello and welcome back to the MMA Bar. Today, we're going to discuss arguably the best UFC event of 2022. A rundown of the main card and highlights of the fights to keep you entertained. UFC 275, also known as The War in Singapore, took place on June 12, 2022 at the Singapore Indoor Stadium in Kalang, Singapore. UFC 275 was a night full of shocks, surprises, and most importantly, action. Headlining this event was a UFC light heavyweight championship bout between current champion Glover Teixeira and former risen light heavyweight champion Yiri Prohaska. The main event saw 42-year-old light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira looking to continue his late career go against modern-day samurai Yiri Prohaska. Youth versus experience was the obvious storyline, and the fight looked to be a good one. In the co-main event was a women's flyweight championship bout between current champion Valentina Shevchenko and Brazil's Talia Santos. The co-main event battle between Valentina Shevchenko and Talia Santos was a matchup everyone was excited about. The number one pound-for-pound -pound women's fighter Valentina Shevchenko was facing what was touted as her toughest challenge in years. She was on a sixth title defense win streak and had been winning dominantly. While few had given Brazil Santos much of a chance against the dominant force that was Shevchenko, she surprised many. A women's strawweight rematch between former UFC women's strawweight champions Zhang Weili and Ioana Yedseishik took place as the co-co-main event. The pair previously met at UFC 248 where Zhang successfully defended the championship against Yedseishik by split decision in what was the greatest fight in women's MMA history. Starting with a banger, the main card was opened by Jack Della Maddalena and Ramazan Emeev. Emeev had Della Maddalena in a deep anaconda choke, but Della Maddalena managed to escape and tore a wicked combination into Emeev. In the storm, Della Maddalena snuck in a pair of left hooks to the body that crumbled Emeev and secured the stoppage in just over two minutes. The next fight on the main card was a battle between two interesting Walter Wade prospects, Jake Matthews and Andre Fialo. Being his fourth fight this year, Fialo had collected knockouts in six of his last seven pro fights. Matthews, on the other hand, came into the fight in need of redemption after falling short to Sean Brady back in March 2021. Matthews put together the best performance of his career as he shockingly used his hands to dispatch the hard-hitting Fialo. After being dropped in round one, Matthews roared back in the second round and repeatedly clipped Fialo before finishing the job with a massive punch that sank the Brazilian. Finally, it was time for a rematch of the 2020 fight of the year and the greatest women's MMA fight in history. The fight started off with Ioana throwing hard leg kicks that dropped Whaley. Whaley pops back to her feet and both are connecting. Whaley, who came into the fight with an improved wrestling skill set, took Ioana down and pummeled her with strikes. Whaley took Ioana down two more times in the round in what was a dominant round for her. Less than a minute into the second round, Weili Zhang shocked the returning Yuana Yedzeishik with a spinning back fist, securing her spot as the next title challenger. The second round KO floored Poland's Yedzeishik, who had not fought in two years, and who announced her retirement after the bout. Yedzeishik left her gloves in the octagon and retired after the loss, capping a decorated career for the former longtime strawweight champion. Sad to see her go out like that. The boogie woman stated her reasons for retirement as wanting to focus on being a mom and businesswoman. The rematch started out similar to their 2020 fight of the year, but the Chinese former champion made nice adjustments and eventually landed a walk-off spinning back fist knockout. It was an absolutely thrilling rematch, but Zhang closed the show with a surreal spinning back fist that left Yid Seishik face down on the canvas. Now she will get a chance to regain her title against Carla Esparza. Now in the co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko was set to defend her women's flyweight championship against Talia Santos. As the fight started, Valentina looked to take the center of the octagon as she usually does. Santos charged and Shevchenko wrapped her up along the cage, establishing a clinch situation. Shevchenko went for a takedown but missed and Santos made use of this opportunity to take her back, working in a rear naked choke. 
Shevchenko fought off the choke with punches and made it out of the round. Credit to her strength and grappling ability, Santos got out to an early lead and won the first round. In the second round, Valentina landed punches and kicks on her opponent until the pair clenched again. Santos, now confident in her ground game, looked for a takedown and got it rather easily. It was obvious she was the better fighter when it came to the ground. Valentina was active off her back and nearly got a gogo plata. Now eager to finish the fight, Valentina looked for an armbar. Santos avoids and lands in Shevchenko's guard as the round ends. This round was similar to the second round. Perhaps the biggest occurrence was a headbutt on the right eye socket of Talia Santos that completely shot off the eye. With Valentina having success on the feet, Santos again got a takedown and she threatened a choke as she dominated off Valentina's back. Now in the championship rounds, Santos's eye is swelling fast and her face looks like a disaster. With Santos' compromise, Shevchenko now started to land more frequently. Santos tried to survive and she got a takedown with 15 seconds to spare in the round. In the final round, Shevchenko ripped a combination and picked up the aggression. She realized she might be behind on the scorecards so she needed to finish the fight. Having to deal with the pressure, Santos wrapped up Shevchenko and took her down. Santos had her back but Shevchenko managed to escape. Shevchenko now got her own takedown and looked to finish Santos in the crucifix position. Well, Santos managed to survive, taking the fight to the judges' scorecards. Valentina Shevchenko successfully defended her flyweight belt by split decision. The judges scored the fight 48-47, 49-46 for Shevchenko, and 48-47 for Santos. Valentina Shevchenko was pushed hard for the first time in years, with Talia Santos winning enough ground exchanges to put a scare to the dominant champion. Finally, in the main event, Yiri Prohaska defeated Glover Teixeira by fifth-round submission to become the organization's new light heavyweight champion. Although the new champion was dominated most of the fight, his mindset couldn't bring him to lose. The Shera pulled out all the experience and looked like he was going to take home the belt but a mistake left him sprawled out on the ground. As the fight started, the Shera took Prohaska to the floor fast. The champion knew he had the better chance of retaining the title if he didn't trade punches. The Brazilian dominated the fight on the ground and tried some submissions but it didn't come off. Towards the end of the round, Prohaska gained top position and connected with some punches when he had his opponent on the ground. In the second round, Prohaska understood that he had to look for the fight on his feet. He avoided in every way going to the ground. Then the challenger turned on. He started connecting kicks, knees, and left and right punches. The champion was dominated as he didn't know how to escape from such punishment. Prohaska then made a very serious mistake. He fell to the floor, and Teixeira went like a wounded beast on his rival. He punished him with a ground and pound, and with an elbow, he opened the wound in the face of the challenger. At the end of the round, Yiri ended exhausted and had a terrible cut above the left eyebrow. In the third round, things went Prohaska's way. He was able to make the fight develop standing most of the time, with a knee he hurt the Teixeira badly who fell to the canvas and there he began to receive all kinds of blows. Deshera ended the round with a cut on the bridge of his nose. The champion came out with a lot of determination in the fourth round. If Prohaska wanted an exchange of punches, he would have an exchange of punches. The Brazilian brought out all his experience, combined all kinds of punches, and made his power felt. Deshera came out again with everything in the fifth round. A right hand put Prohaska in bad conditions, the Brazilian smelled blood, went for a guillotine, but did not tighten the arm well and the prey went away. The fight was leaning more toward the Shira but a mistake cost dearly. The champion took the challenger to the canvas but did not defend the position well. Prohaska won the mount, turned him over, and applied a rear naked choke with 28 seconds left in the fight. Yuri Prohaska made sure to remove the judges from the equation on Saturday. The Czech star became the new UFC light heavyweight champion at UFC 275 with a shocking fifth round submission of Glover Teixeira. That moment marked the conclusion of an endlessly thrilling title fight that saw Prohaska secure a rear naked choke with just 28 seconds remaining in the main. 
main event. According to the official scorecards, had Prohaska not forced Teixeira to tap, Teixeira would have left Singapore with the UFC title still around his waist. Teixeira was ahead on two of the three cards and by coming close to finishing Prohaska, he had the fifth round in the back. As is usually said, in MMA, anything can happen. UFC 275 is in the books and it was arguably the best and wildest event the UFC has put on this year. Without any doubt, the main event will go down as the greatest fight in UFC light heavyweight history, even surpassing the first fight between Jon Jones and Alexander Gustafsson. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.